Good morning, Colorado, and welcome to Colorado Worship Online. We're an ecumenical group of different denominations preparing worship for these times of pandemic. And this is our worship for Sunday, August 9th, 2020. Uh, I'd like to uh, point out who's with us today. Our pastors include Melinda Veach of First Presbyterian Church, uh, Jeff Carlson of uh, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. We have India with us from uh, First Presbyterian Church, and we have Caroline with us from uh, First Lutheran Church of Gypsum, and I'm Pastor Edward Mooney of First Lutheran Church in Gypsum, Colorado. I would like to point out that we can be heard on KMTS-FM 99.1 or online at kmts.com every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. And we'd like to send a shout out to Gabe Chenoweth at uh, KMTS saying thank you for airing our broadcast. In today's worship, we're going to hear about the story we're probably all very familiar with, Jesus walking on the water. And as someone who had a background in educational psychology as a teacher and a professor, I can say that this story that we're going to hear today um, really hits home with me. One of the greatest obstacles to learning or to following our Lord is fear. And that's kind of what we're gonna be talking about today. How do we hear the voice of our Lord and how do we follow that voice in times of great fear and confusion? Well, at this time, we're gonna get some music from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Jeff? This is a song from, uh, sung by Aaron and Terry Lyles. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died to buy our pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. is 
I'd like to share the opening prayer, which is from our Sunday school children at First Presbyterian. This is the prayer we say with them when we gather. God go before us to lead us. God go behind us to protect us. God go beneath us to support us. God go beside us to befriend us. Do not be afraid. May the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon us. Do not be afraid. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to see you. And I have a story for you. We're talking today about how God is way more powerful than fear, and sometimes how our fear leads us into places that take us away from God. So this is a story we're going to hear in just a few minutes about the disciple or the apostle Peter, who sees Jesus walking on the water and jumps out to go and meet him, and then his fear makes it difficult. But he would also have known this story about a powerful prophet who got afraid as well, which reminds us that sometimes no matter how much faith we have, we still can get into fear. This is about the prophet Elijah way, way back in the days of the early Hebrews, the early Israelites. And Elijah was a great prophet that people turned to even in the time um, when things seemed to go awry, they always turned to Elijah. But Elijah got into a battle with some prophets um, of another religion who preached something different than God as the one who is the source of our lives. And so that battle didn't go too well. It was a contest, really, not a battle. And Elijah didn't seem in his mind to will it, win it. So that sent Elijah off running into the wilderness, and he found way out in the wilderness a cave and you can see Elijah hunkered down in the back of that cave just just curled up in a ball of fear well God was not having any of that and God went and found Elijah which God finds us in our fear really important and he said Elijah I want you to come out here to the front of this cave and so Elijah did he went right out and stood in the very mouth of the cave. And God said, let me tell you some things about me and how you can recognize me. So Elijah standing there, God sent flames in front of the cave, big burning flames. And God said to Elijah, see these flames? See all the stuff that's burning? I'm not there. And then God sent a mighty wind, the kind of wind like a hurricane wind that can tear apart houses and trees. And God said, see this wind? I'm not in this wind either. And then God said, I'm here. I am in the sound of sheer silence. And when you get still, when you turn away from all those things that frighten you and turn to me, I am there. I am in the quiet and the stillness, and that is where you will find me. And it's really important for us to remember right now, as school is getting started and there's lots of fear in the world, it's easy to look around and get caught up in the swirl of all the scary things that are going on and forget that God is God and God is there for us when we get quiet enough to sit and listen to something other than all those loud voices that are talking nonstop in the world. So I invite you to sit still today, to listen. Listen to the wind, look at the sun, be outside in the stillness of nature, and remember God is there and God is inside, in your heart and in your house, there's nowhere you can go that God is not. So do not be afraid. Amen. And now we've got another song today from a couple of our younger singers at Good Shepherd Lutheran. Was blind, but now. 
His grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. And we've been here ten thousand years, right shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise and we first begun. Today's gospel is Matthew 14, 22 through 33. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you have little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, today, as you can see, our theme is a lot to do with fear. As someone who spent a long time teaching, I've seen fear in a classroom quite a bit. And this story reminds me quite a bit of something that happened a number of years ago. We won't say how many years ago. Um, I was a teacher in a classroom and we had our final exam coming. And a young lady came into the class and I could see she was shaking, she was scared. Now this girl was like an almost perfect 100% A student. And I remember this is why this came to my mind as I looked at her and says, why are you shaking? Why are you afraid? And she said, it's my final exam, and I've been studying, but I'm not sure I could do it. And I looked at her, and I remember I grabbed her shoulders, and I looked at her, and I said, believe, you're going to do fine. And she looked at me, and she went to her desk, she took the test, and she got 100%. And later, she came and thanked me. She said, when you just grab my shoulders and said, relax, it's going to be all right. She said, I felt the fear leave me. Now, something I found interesting about this passage today. First of all, Jesus says, you of little faith, why did you doubt? What we miss is that earlier, Peter gave the answer to why he doubted. He said that the, world, the, the waters, the storm was swirling around him, and he was frightened. And there is the answer. That's fear. So right now, the storms are swirling around us. There are problems with the pandemic. We have economic fears. People are scared for their loved ones. We're afraid for our jobs. We're afraid for our homes. The, the, just the fear is swirling everywhere. And there are times when each of us feel doubt, feel fear, unsure. I will admit that I have felt those things in the last few months. I get distracted from my Lord. I find that it's difficult for me to hear his voice. And like Elijah, I'm looking at earthquakes or fires or things like that. And is God in this terrible thing or this big thing? 
and more and more, I come to the realized, like the Elijah story, this story is simply Jesus and Peter, the two of them alone together is what we're focused on. And right now, I've been finding it difficult to hear my Lord's voice, and I feel my feet sinking into the water from time to time. There are days, as my wife Caroline could probably tell you, that I go head first right into the water. But I must tell you, there's something you've got to see at this story, and I didn't see it, and I've got to give my wife credit for pointing it out. Maybe it's because of her Presbyterian background. But uh, she pointed out to me that even when Peter was sinking into the water, even when Peter was consumed by fear, even when Peter knew he was going to die, Jesus put his hand out and he grabbed Peter and he saved Peter because Peter called out to him and said, Lord, save me. And he did. And the one piece of encouragement I have to give to everyone today is even if we are struggling, even if we feel ourselves getting sucked into the waters, even if we feel the fear is overcoming us, Jesus is there and he's reaching out his hand and he's saying, I'm here. As I've told people, there was a moment in my life many years ago when I felt abandoned by everyone, by God, by my family, by my church, and I cried out. And the Lord said to me, but I love you. And right now, I believe he's saying that to each of us right now. I've seen people scared over losing their homes. They're scared over their family members. I worry about my children and grandchildren. We're all frightened. But Jesus is there with his hand out right now for each of us saying, but I love you. I am here. Hear me, not the storm. Hear me, not the fire. Hear me, not the earthquake. And I've been doing something, and, and Pastor Melinda's children's worship touched me deeply. I have been going to my private place in my heart. I called into my prayer closet, and I have been seeking the Lord. I've been saying, Lord, I need to hear your quiet presence. So in this time, let's remember, many of us are saying, Lord, save me. He's doing that. Let us hold on to that. Please pray with me. Lord, today so many people are frightened. We're scared of the storm around us. We're scared of the economic worries. We're scared of the health worries. We're scared of what will happen with our children and grandchildren. We're so frightened, Lord. Please, Lord, save us. And we pray this knowing that Jesus reaches out his hand to each one of us right now and says, I am here. And I ask that you hear our prayers in the name of Jesus, the risen one. Amen. And now a song sung by Karen and Tom Cochran. This is a song called Captivate Me by Nick and Anita Hay from the North Umbria community in Northeastern Oh, 
Now I invite you to join your hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Sisters and brothers in Christ, let us stand in silence for the world is worried and the Prince of Peace is moving towards a cross. Holy God, in Jesus Christ, you said, do not be afraid. I have overcome the world. The peace I give the world will never take away. So we call on your power, Holy God, to meet us in our helplessness, be in our thinking and be in our speaking. We call on your clarity, O God, Meet us in our confusion, be in our acting and in our stillness. We call on your mercy, O oh God, to meet us in our brokenness, be in our waking and be in our sleeping. We call on you to meet us in our division, God in our meeting, and you also, God, in our parting. Out of judgment came your mercy, for you did not abandon us. For the love that you have for us came again. The hope that you have came bearing our pain, and out of gentleness came strength in Jesus Christ. In him you spoke a word to the outcast and stranger, making them welcome to the sick and despairing, making them whole. Out of freedom in love came faithfulness. You gave your life on the cross for the poor and the prisoner, the sign of deliverance. For you loved the world so much that you sent your only son. O oh God, out of love comes celebration. And in that celebration, your kingdom is among us. Your peace is the means of making us one. Your truth does not stumble and justice is done. Out of change comes possibility, O oh God, and your new creation is begun. The promise of your splendor is the signal of worth. You are the source of all goodness, renewing the earth. And with our freedom, you call us to responsibility the responsibility that says yes to discipleship and following you. So in our compassion, Lord, make your love known. And in our conviction, Lord, make your power shown. Keep us mindful that you have chosen us and you have chosen us, O oh Lord, to love one another in the name of the Lord of love who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now a Franciscan blessing from the group, The Work of the People.
Please pray with me. Thank you for being with us during this service, this worship. We hope it has touched hearts. And for our benediction, let us pray. God, show us how to turn into our fear to see it and to use that to reach out to others in fear. God, please help us to turn towards our pain so that we may feel empathy for those who are in pain. Lord, please turn us towards our anguish so we can understand the anguish of others. Father, please turn us towards our weakness so that we may see and have mercy upon the weakness of others. Lord, turn us toward love, so that our heart may not be hardened in these times when a gentle, compassionate, loving heart is what we need the most. Lord, let us live the example of Christ, that while Peter was sinking in doubt and in fear, he reached out his hand to Peter. Lord, let us learn how to reach out our hands to others who are sinking this week. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go this week and serve the Lord. Amen.